Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be having a look at the new Honor Magic V5. So I've been lucky enough to get my hands on a Magic V5 early uh, by getting one from China through a friend and here it is in the flesh, the Honor Magic V5 in the beautiful dawn gold colour, um, it absolutely looks fantastic. Um, I've just done a short on YouTube to introduce the phone and also compare it to the Samsung Z Fold 6. I'm going to be doing a few comparisons with the Samsung Z Fold 7 as well when that comes out. So I've got the Z Fold 6 here and the Honor Magic V5. So the, the thinness is obviously the thing that's the major difference between these phones. Lots on the market at the moment. We've got some big launches in China, we've got some big launches over here, we've got the Z Flip 7, the Z Fold 7, uh, the Vivo X Fold 5, which I've also got in the studio, and the Honor Magic V5 as well. So some of them are China only, some of them are global launches, we've got a real mixed bag here, but I've managed to get my hands on a couple of these phones to kind of go through with you. So why is the Honor Magic V5 so exciting? Well, it's, it's officially the world's thinnest foldable phone now, so it's beaten the Oppo N5 by a millimetre. Well, not point two millimeter. I think it is not a millimeter. Uh, so we're now at four point one millimeters unfold, uh, unfolded. So you can see here, this is a very thin device, and I'm going to show you lots of shots in this video of this device in action and how it works. I've only had the device now for a couple of days. Just wanted to do an initial video to get my thoughts on the channel to introduce the device to you, and I will do a full review follow up in a few weeks' time, as always. So folded, you've got eight point eight millimeters. So this is. A foldable phones are now officially getting to the point where you can actually use them as a main device without actually sacrificing much portability and usability. So I can use this one-handed now, which is unheard of a few years ago with foldable phones. So it's nice to see the manufacturers increasing the thinness. We didn't ask for this thinness necessarily, but it is nice to have. One thing I don't want to see happening, and a lot of people have said this to me, I don't want to see battery life decreasing to sacrifice the thinness. So this was a big worry about the Opera N5, and it actually does have a decent battery. So the Honor N3 5 has been um, marketed as having excellent battery. So in the one terabyte version in China, it has a 6,100 milliamp battery silicon carbon inside this phone, which is amazing considering how thin it is. So this is this version is the 512 gigabyte version that's got 5,850 milliamp battery, which is probably the version that's gonna come globally. It may be a bit less depending on manufacturing issues and international regulations, but at the moment, this phone will last me two days. And it's it, you know, the, the battery life on this phone, initial impressions are that it's very good. And it's as good as the Oppo N5, or the foldables out there. So one thing this does have um, in terms of, so we'll, let's go over the design first. We always do design in these videos, don't we? So the design of this phone is fantastic. It looks great. So it's very similar to the V3 in design. I love the V3. It's one of my favorite foldables when it was out last year. I had it for a few months and then I obviously moved on to another phone as I do. But um, so you've got a slightly bigger um, internal screen now on the V5, which is not much bigger, just a little bit bigger and a little bit thinner bezels. And it does feel a, a little bit wider. Um, and, you know, the thinness does make a difference as well in terms of how the phone feels in hand when folded and unfolded. So it can feel a bit ridiculously thin, actually. So when you've got it unfolded and you kind of go like that, it does, you know, it feels really thin. It does get, take some getting used to it. It's amazing how thin this phone is and it still amazes me now. And I'm, I'm not trying to sell this phone to you. I'm just amazed at how thin this phone is. So inside this, um, also we've got the back, this, this the phone being really thin, we've actually got a huge camera bump as well. So this has uh, got three cameras on it, all 50 megapixel cameras. I have to say initial impressions are the cameras are very good compared to the V3. The V3 cameras weren't bad, but the V5 does feel like a next generation step up. So what we've got there is, you've, we'll go over the cameras later on, but you've got three 50 megapixel shooters, an excellent telephoto, a wide and an ultra wide. So good camera tech in there. The bump is big because the phone's so thin. I, I don't mind that. I think Honor needed to sacrifice either. They need to either go for a thin camera bump and a lesser camera or a bigger camera bump and a good, better camera. For me, the camera is very important. This is one reason why I've never used a foldable as my main phone for a long time because the cameras aren't quite good enough as the main phones, uh, candy bar style phones. And that's one of my sort of not pet hates with foldables. One of my main reasons I don't use a foldable as my main phone at the moment is because of the battery life. But I have to, sorry, the cameras. But I have to say that the um, cameras on this so far are looking great. So let's go over sort of specifications. So this, the Honor now has a Snapdragon 8 Elite CPU in it. It's not the cut down version, like the CPU in the 
uh, Oppo N5. It is a full fat Snapdragon 8 Elite and it is a belter of a CPU as we know from other phones and it runs everything you can possibly throw to. So the phone feels very snappy in everyday use, very fast. I have to say though, I have a Vivo X Fold 5 here and that runs on Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and that still feels really fast as well. So I don't know how much difference this 8 Elite is making unless you push it really hard in games. I've done some gaming on it and gaming feels fast, fluid and smooth as you would expect on the 8 Elite and it does on the 8 Gen 3 as well. So I wouldn't say that makes a big difference. It does run quite warm, the N5 at start off, V5 to start off with. Just one of my initial impressions, it's running quite warm, which most 8 Elite phones do. Nothing uncomfortable, just a little bit warmer than I thought it might do, but nothing uh, that's a major problem. So also, the first time we've got dust resistance on this phone. So we've got IP58 uh, for dust resistance and IP59 for water resistance. So that can withstand high pressure water jets, uh, immersible for one minute, 30 minute, one meter at 30 minutes. So this is quite, this is a big step up for foldables. Now we're getting dust resistance on foldable with the hinge, carbon fiber hinge um, and titanium as well. Carbon fiber under the screen. On a, went on a lot about this on their launch tech, about how strong this phone is. It's meant to withstand lots of drops. Uh, daily use and they're really pushing this phone as someone who as people who can use this phone as a daily phone and not have to worry about damage because foldables in the past have been quite uh, easy to damage and this is one thing and they're expensive obviously so this is one reason why a lot of people didn't go for foldables because of that sacrifices on battery life and the durability but now we're really pushing manufacturers are pushing the barriers of technology and we're getting faster cpus and then we're getting more battery life same battery life as you would expect on a normal phone if not more and also we're getting the durability with this with the dust resistance coming in and the carbon fiber. So I think this, this year is the most exciting year for foldables yet. We've got some models on the market like this on a V5 that are actually pushing boundaries and enable us to use this as our main phone and just be as durable. So I think this is just an initial impression. Let's look at the back of the camera then. So the, the cameras, as I mentioned, I said 50 megapixels across the board. That's not quite true. It's 64 megapixel periscope telephoto. So they've put an extra megapixels in there to give us that digital zoom so we can enhance the zoom a bit more, 20 times, I think it is 30 times. And the digital zoom works quite well. So the cameras so far look good. I've, I'll show you some initial shots on this. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with the cameras. Uh, and it, this, it, I think overall it's an improvement over the V3 and also it's an improvement on the Z Fold 6. And other, I think the cameras are up there with the best foldables, or certainly if not the best foldable at the moment. So we'll see how the Samsung Z Fold 7 does when it comes out. But so far the Honor is taking the crown for the best foldable camera I've seen. Um, also, fast charging, 66 watt fast charging. So that's same as the V3, but it does make a difference when you've got that big, nearly 6,000 milliamp battery and it charges well. I've got also got wireless charging at five watts. So 50 watts with the Honor stand. I haven't actually got one, so I can't test it out. I just briefly touch on colors. So this is the Dawn Gold color, as I mentioned, it looks beautiful. I think it's one of the nicest colors Honor have ever released. It's also wearing in black, ivory white, reddish brown as the V3 was last year. So. The, the price in, in China as well starts at about £1,070 and goes up to about £1,370 in the UK and in Europe and also anywhere else because it's not coming to the US unfortunately. It's going to start at probably about £1,600 or maybe less with offers. So we're going to start, it's going to be an expensive phone this and it's going to be five or £600 more than the Chinese model which is the one I've got here. So should you import it from China? There's some things to know about if you do import it. One, yes, you'll get the phone earlier. You'll get the phone a bit cheaper, but it is running Chinese OS, which means it won't be compatible with Wear OS and some banking apps. It will have compatibility issues with some things like Teams, and it won't also have a full uh, UK warranty. So you'll have to go back through a Chinese company who bought it through to get any fixes under warranty. So there's just some things to be bear in mind there if you do decide to import it. But on the global launch is coming next week, probably coming to the UK in the middle of um, early August, to the, towards the end of August. I don't know yet. They haven't got an official date yet. So stay tuned, we'll get some more content on here about the full, I'll do a full camera breakdown review on this, full design review, and we'll get some good content on the V5 going and some real world use and see how it goes. So that's just been my initial impressions so far are really good. Uh, I got the 512 model, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 1,250 pounds. It was off uh, Wanda Mobile, so worth checking out if you want to import it. Um, so thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, just um, some initial thoughts on this phone, so far really good. Um, really excited for the Z Fold 7 coming out next week or the week after and also the um, Z Flip 7 as well. So we'll get those on the channel as soon as we can. Thanks for watching.